Hello amigos y amigas, you are listening to English Made Simple, episode number 64, 64. Yo, how is it? ¿Qué onda? Welcome to the English Made Simple podcast. My name is Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net. Hey guys, uh, just to let you know, English Made Simple podcast is going through rebranding. I have changed the look of the podcast image. We have changed the image. So what do you think? It's easier to recognize the podcast now. You can see it from the airplane. <laughs> I think it looks pretty cool. It stands out. The image has uh, changed. I'm still the same. I haven't changed a bit, uh, except a few gray hairs. Uh, gray hair is canas in Spanish. Gray hair, getting old. But overall, still the same. Short and sweet. <laughs> Guess what? I saw a sign outside the shop uh, today. It said, nine sleeps till Christmas. This is how people normally count down towards a holiday. So in this case, it's Christmas. We can say nine days to go or nine sleeps to go until Christmas. Basically, we have to sleep nine times before the actual Christmas. <laughs> it's a bit of a literal translation, but you know what I mean. Nine sleeps till Christmas. That's all we have. So welcome, guys. Thank you for joining me. In this episode, I want to mention something called Homophones. Homophones refer to words that sound the same but they are spelled differently and have a different meaning. It's a grammar term, homophone. There is also another word, homonyms, which we'll cover next time. Homonyms refer to words that are spelled the same but they have different meanings. So English language is full of these kind of words, okay? It's full of these confusing words. <laughs> I struggled with this in the beginning um, when I was learning English, but the more you practice, the easier it gets. So don't worry, be happy. So I'll give you an example of homophones. For example, the past tense of the verb to eat. Comer, eat. The past tense is ate. It's spelled as A-T-E, three letters. But when we talk about numbers, we say eight for number eight. Numero ocho, eight. And it's spelled differently. It's spelled E-I-G-H-T. So I had a question uh, posted in Facebook group from Max from Brazil regarding these uh, same sounding words with different meanings. He brought this up a few months ago. And I have finally found some time to prepare an episode about it. So, good question, Max. So, I, I thought to myself, if Max had a question like this about homophones, then I bet the majority of you will have the same question. Cool. So, I will cover this in today's episode. Uh, I also want to talk about holidays in general. In particular, what to say at the time of celebrations. How do people celebrate uh, Christmas in Australia and New Zealand? Why do we say Merry Christmas and not Happy Christmas, for example? So, there is a lot to cover in this episode, so sit back and uh, enjoy the show. Are you ready, amigos? Let's start, shall we? I want to start off with Christmas holidays first. It's a short topic and uh, then I'll start talking about the homophones because the word Merry is kind of a homophone. Phone. It's part of the homophone family. So, when I moved from Eastern Europe to New Zealand, I found it quite strange that people celebrate Christmas on the beach. La Playa. In Serbia, we celebrated it in the snow. Con nieve. As kids, I remember we played in the snow and uh, we used to build a snowman. So, for kids, the snow is really fun. But for adults, it's probably not so fun because when you have to shovel the snow every morning before going to work, it's not really, it's not really a fun time, <laughs> not an enjoyable experience. I remember my dad used to shovel the snow 
every morning before going to work. He would wake up at 5 a.m. and just clear the snow. It's, oh, it's hard work, hard work. Where I come from, New Year is kind of a bigger celebration. Uh, we give presents for New Year, not really for Christmas. We also have a Christmas tree, Arbol de Navidad. We would decorate Christmas trees um, as well, like they do here in Australia and New Zealand. But our Christmas is actually on the 7th of January. It's Orthodox Christmas. It's celebrated differently. So yeah, when we moved as a family to New Zealand, we had to adjust. We had to adapt to different customs. However, in Australia and New Zealand, people would celebrate Christmas on the beach. There is also a three-day public holiday. That's great news uh, if you have to work because we don't work on Christmas Day, Boxing Day and New Year's Day. Boxing Day. What is a Boxing Day? Uh, is there a day when people do boxing? They hit each other? <laughs> no, not at all. It's to do with Christmas gifts. It is on the day after Christmas Day and it is strict on a work day it's on the 26th of December and Boxing Day is uh, marked in the UK and other Commonwealth nations including New Zealand and Australia Boxing Day originated in England in the 19th century when the servants were required to work on the Christmas Day and then allowed to visit their families the next day they would be given Christmas boxes like gifts containing money or similar so this is called a Boxing Day and it's just another day when people don't work, okay? It's a public holiday. Okay, so that was a bit of a history trivia for you. And uh, if you're a cricket fan, I know I have some listeners from Pakistan, India and Sri Lanka. There is a famous Boxing Day game in Australia uh, for cricket fans. I have to say I don't know much about cricket. But I know it is another famous sport in Australia and New Zealand. And on every Boxing Day, there is a game of cricket called Boxing Day Test or Boxing Day Match. I apologize to the cricket fans if I got this one wrong. I see it often advertised on TV and I thought, mm, maybe I should bring that up. Maybe I should mention it. <laughs> okay, so in Australia and New Zealand, we would play something called Kris Kringle or Secret Santa, Amigo Secreto. We would celebrate this uh, on Christmas Day with friends and family. I think it is similar in Chile. When I was in Chile, my Chilean family would play Amigo Secreto. So for those of you who don't know it, uh, what this means is you pick a random name from a hat and you are not allowed to share this name with anyone. So if you selected a name, you have to buy a present for that person. And that person shouldn't even know that it is you who is buying the present because it's supposed to be a secret. That's called Secret Santa. And people would play this at work or they would play it with family and friends, okay? If you're planning to move to New Zealand or Australia or any other English-speaking country, you should remember to say a Merry Christmas or happy holidays during the Christmas break. Everywhere you go, any shop you visit, people would say Merry Christmas. Why do we say Merry Christmas and not Happy Christmas? Hmm, good question. So normally we would say I wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. You will hear this in the movies. Saying Happy Christmas is not incorrect you are not wrong to say happy christmas but it is not as common i think it's more common in the uk they can say happy christmas it's not wrong but it's not common cool okie dokie are you with me so far hopefully now this is a nice segue into homophones i want to introduce you to this grammar term homophones Homophones, the words that sound the same but have different spelling and different meaning. And English language is full of this. So, for example, I use the word Merry Christmas. The word Merry, which is spelt as M E 
double R, Y, is an adjective and it means cheerful and lively. Okay, happy. I would say happy, but it's cheerful. It's more cheerful. The word merry, which is spelt as M A double R Y, is a verb and it means to get married or to take in marriage. Another meaning is to join together or to combine harmoniously. There could be a difference in pronunciation between Mary and Mary, but every time I hear these words, to me, they sound the same. Mary and Mary. So one is an adjective and one is a verb. They're spelled differently. And guess what? There is also a name, Mary. Mary is a common girl's name in, um, in English. And it is also pronounced the same as those two words that I just mentioned, Mary. If we had to translate Mary, the name Mary in Spanish, it would be Maria. I have a friend in Serbia and Bulgaria as well called Maria. It's a very popular name, right? Mary, Maria. Anyway, so now we have these three words. Mary is an adjective, Mary is a verb, and Mary is somebody's name. Pronounced the same. Let's see if we can spot the difference when we use all these three words together in a sentence. Let's imagine you have a friend called John and John is in love with Mary. You say to John, Hey John, it will be a merry moment when you decide to marry Mary. It will be a merry moment when you decide to marry Mary. <laughs> We used all these three words together in a sentence. A merry moment, an adjective describing the moment. It means happy, cheerful moment. And to marry as a verb, marry, marry, marry the name of the girl. <laughs> Okie dokie. Are you with me so far? I hope so. <laughs> Excellent. Hope you're learning some new vocabulary here. That's the idea of today's episode. So now, um, another example I wanted to use is the one from uh, Max from Brazil. He had a question regarding there, there, and there. <laughs> this is going to be fun. So, there, spelled as T-H-E-R-E, -E, just means opposite of here, aqui. There, aí. Here, aqui, okay? Pronounced, pronounced as there. For example, the ball is over there. The second there is a possessive pronoun of they and uh, is usually used before a noun. There is spelled as T H E I R. Pronounced there. For example, it is their house. This house belongs to them. It is their house. And uh, the last there <laughs> is a contraction of they plus are, the verb to be. They are. Example, where are they? <laughs> we can answer this as they are there at their house drinking a cup of tea. They are there at their house drinking a cup of tea. They are there, there. They are pronounced the same. All three sound the same but are used differently. Okie dokie. Easy peasy Japanesey. So here we are, amigos, approaching the end of the show. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. We learned some new vocabulary talking about holidays and Christmas. And we also learned about homophones. It's a grammar term. If you're interested to learn more, you are more than welcome uh, to check out uh, homophones on the um, internet. I think there are about 500 words that are classed as homophones in English language. I'm sure you have come across them before. And uh, whether you celebrate Christmas or not, at the end of the day, it's just an excuse to have a party. Okay? To have some time off work, to eat a lot, to drink uh, and be merry, you know, be happy. 
By the way, Christmas is pronounced with a silent T. We don't pronounce the T in that word Christmas. We say Christmas. And uh, guys, if in doubt, when you're not sure wh what to say, uh, whether to say Merry Christmas or Happy Christmas, then just say Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays is quite acceptable for the majority of people who are not necessarily religious. Happy Holidays. And uh, by the way, how are you going with your New Year's resolutions? What is your New Year's resolution? ¿Cuáles son tus deseos para el próximo año? I will remind you again. For those of you who are new to the show, go back and listen to number 63, episode number 63. You will learn more about New Year's resolutions. Thank you for joining me, amigos y amigas. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please share it with your friends. The more, the merrier. There it is. An English saying, the more, the merrier. Have an awesome week. Please be safe and have fun. You've been jamming with Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net. Until next time, hasta la próxima. <laughs>